Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna talk about the top 6 Mr. Olympia competitors, of course, in the open class. I'm gonna show you a couple of physique updates that we got in the past couple of days, few days, and uh, I'm gonna touch a little bit on their chances at the Mr. Olympia. The first one and the most impressive one, of course, is the one that you're looking at right here, and of course, that's our possibly most likely 2019 Mr. Olympia champion, Brandon Curry. I don't think anybody can beat this guy, honestly, that's my take, of course, at this point, because look at this physique. This is crazy for five weeks out, five weeks out, guys. He's shredded, he's full, he's muscular, he's super impressive. I mean, this is just impressiveness all day long. I love what I see. I mean, we are always seeing his upper body shots. We did see his legs in that posing video that his coach, Abdullah, posted a couple of days or maybe a week ago and his legs did seem improved but today we get another physique update of him of his full physique of his legs as well and it's not really much of a difference he looks as impressive as he was a week ago or whenever that video was taken and his legs do seem improved compared to 2018 mr olympia but let's be honest they're not as impressive as his upper body because his upper body is super impressive it's very hard to be matched by even his other body parts, for example, his lower body. And the thing about his lower body is he doesn't simply lack size. What he lacks is details, deep cuts and striations in his quads, in his hamstrings and his uh, glutes as well. But as far as upper body, he is full as a house. He's super full. He's shredded. He has the cuts. He has the conditioning. On top of it all, he has a small, tiny, tight waist with beautiful abs, very symmetrical. Overall, very good waistline. And that's a prerogative today in 2019 in modern bodybuilding. After all the bubble gut, you know, controversy, all we need right now is somebody with small, tight waist without a bubble gut, with good abs, with very aesthetic physique. If he just had perfect legs, the, he could just nail the Mr. Olympia for like next 10 years or so. He would be perfect candidate for it. But he doesn't really have perfect legs, although his upper body is absolutely perfect. I mean, his arms on point. And I say arms, I mean forearms, biceps, triceps. Shoulders, very 3D. Chest, perfect. Stomach, beautiful. And a very well-developed back. And that's why I'm impressed basically the most. Because I am impressed when I see very impressive and very developed back. That's what I like to see personally. I mean, maybe you guys like to see some impressive chest and biceps, maybe some stomach, beautiful stomach lines, maybe big shoulders, broad shoulders, maybe crazy legs. Me personally, I love to see powerful and strong looking back. And that's what Brandon has. First of all, he has a small narrow waist and that gives a great illusion of having a big, big back and big shoulders and also, on top of that, he has a lot of meat on. It's very thick back, you know. When you look at him from the side, you can see a lot of muscle popping. Basically, you can see his back in side shots. And that's what sets apart bodybuilders that are thick and danced from others who are just looking big because of the illusion, because of the genetics. So, Brandon, I mean, he has genetics, don't get me wrong. But his back is also very developed, and that's why I love his physique. If he had better legs... He would be one of the greatest of all time, but unfortunately he doesn't have the genetics for it. And I think it will be enough to win 2019 Mr. Olympia. Now, the contender number two, and possibly second place in the Mr. Olympia 2019, most likely, based on previous performance, I mean, taking third place last year, beating everybody who is going to compete this year, probably, I mean, you're not sure about Phil Heath and John Roden, but most likely they will not compete. So, Rolly is the, the, the favorite, one of the favorites. But, based on Brandon's success at the Arnold Classic, where he absolutely annihilated Rolly, left him in the dust, he has bigger chances because of that. But, Rolly was not at his best. He was not in shape for Arnold. And I'm sure that in this Mr. Olympia, he will be spot on. He will pick perfectly, I'm sure of that. And look at his right arm here. He's just standing there. He's not even flexing, he's just standing there. And his biceps are touching his forearms. <laughs> Imagine that. He's blown up. He is blown up. So, he's gonna be one of the freakiest bodybuilders. He's probably pound for pound the biggest bodybuilder that ever stepped to the Mr. Olympia stage. He never weighed as much as Rami, for example, but Rami is taller. And maybe he has a little bit uh, thicker and denser bones. You know, there is that. I mean, bone density that actually 
is a factor when it comes to weight. So I think Rolly is one of the biggest bodybuilders ever. And at this Mr. Olympia, I'm sure he will peak perfectly. But will that be enough to beat uh, Brandon? I don't think so. He will beat him in legs, that's for sure. Lower body from the front, but from the back, maybe still his lower body will be better from the back. But as far as his upper body, no. Rolly's upper body from the back is not very good. He is not developed as much as Brandon, nowhere near. Especially the lower lats, the spinal erectors, also the glutes. I mean, maybe Rolly has a little bit thicker glutes, but they are not as big structurally. And same thing goes with his hamstrings. So, lower body is going to be probably equal. Maybe Rolly is going to be a little bit better, but upper body from the back, not even close. And everything else is going to be probably close, but I'm sure Brandon will destroy him in the back department. But based on this video, we can be sure that Rolly is coming very strong. And it's going to be a hell of a show. A hell of a show, let me tell you that much. Now, last year at the Mr. Olympia, right behind Rolly, we had William Bonac. But the fifth place was Brandon Curry, that's true. Bonac and Rolly beat Brandon Curry last year, but the changes, the improvements that Brandon was able to make from Mr. Olympia to Arnold Classic 2019 were insane, were absolutely crazy. So they are not going to be able to beat him, not that easily. Unless Brandon comes off, Bonac and Rolly are going to have a hard time battling him. But at this Arnold Classic, Bonac was able to beat Rolly because Rolly was off. But I don't think that's gonna happen. As I said before, I think Rolly will come perfectly sharp, perfectly peaked. And uh, William Bonac, as you can see, this is his most recent photo, looks on point. I mean, he's always, always on. I don't really remember seeing him off. He was a little bit off at 2018 Mr. Olympia. But still, his conditioning was great. It was great conditioning. It was good conditioning, fine conditioning. Only it wasn't 100% William Bonac. Maybe it was 95%. However, later at the Arnold Classic Ohio and also Arnold Classic Australia, Bonac came looking perfect. I mean, that was his 100%. Now, the question is, is he gonna be like that at the Mr. Olympia without Neil Hill? Neil Hill is one of the top coaches in the world. Some would say the best one. And uh, Bonac fired him. Bonac fired him, so he's on his own or maybe he has another trainer, no matter how good his new trainer is, he doesn't know his body as well as Neil Hill. Maybe he's going on his own, and we'll see how that plays out, but I'm pretty sure it's not really hard for Bonac to come peeled, to come on, because he knows his body after all these years, he has very fast metabolism, he has a lot of muscle and a lot of experience, so I'm sure he will peak perfectly. I'm not really sure, it may not happen, but I think in all likeliness it will. And now the question is, can he beat Rolly and Brandon? He maybe can beat one of these guys, but the chances of them both coming off are not very big. And I don't think any of them will come off. I think they will be all perfectly peaked. And now Bonac, he reached his maximum potential. He cannot pack any more muscle on his frame. He cannot come any more conditioned. He can just improve his structure, but that's impossible. So he cannot improve anything. The structure is what is holding him back. So I think because of his structure, because of his broad waist, that's why he will not be able to beat these two guys. But I think he has very deserved third spot. I don't think anybody else can beat him. So the next guy that can possibly beat him is, of course, Dexter Jackson. This is Dexter's most recent photo, one day after Tampa. But guys, you saw him at Tampa Pro. He looked amazing. He improved so much from last year. He came a little bit smaller than last year, and I don't think he will change anything at this Mr. Olympia. So he's back with his coach, George Farah, who is cancer-free, thankfully, now, and with his um, trainer, you know, gym trainer, Charles Glass, but Charles has some health issues, so maybe he's not going to be training him, but I'm sure Dexter will uh, bring his A-game. I don't think he will try to come fuller or more shredded. I think he was perfectly built. I think his quads were, for example, peeled like they never were. I don't think I ever saw him having these kind of details in his quads, ever. And he was all over, like, detailed. I just realized why he is called Blade. Because he beat Lung Sando, who was much bigger than him, with his perfect conditioning. He looked bigger than all of them, and he was smaller than all of them, because of those fine little details that he has. He is shredded. He is shredded. So... 
I think he will come the same, but I think his stomach is protruding a little bit too much. His calves are pretty much completely melted at this point. I don't think judges really care about the calves, but they are visible. And I think it hurts him because they are too visible. You can see that they are looking really bad. And uh, Bonac is fresh. Bonac is at his prime. So I don't think Dexter can beat Bonac. Maybe, maybe if Bonac somehow messes it up without his coach. And Dexter beats him on conditioning, on sharpness. So Dexter can be probably fourth, but maybe on third spot. I don't think he can go upper or lower than that. So I don't think he will be lower than that. I don't think anybody can beat him at the Mr. Olympia except Bonac, Brandon and Rolly. And of course, we can mention, you know, some guys like Sean Roden and Phil Heath and Kai Green. You know, they're like, uh, and also Big Remy. They can come, they can somehow surprise us and come to the Mr. Olympia, but... Let's not count on that, because that's probably not going to happen. And as far as our fifth spot, I think that's going to be Cedric McMillan, because this guy proved himself by winning Arnold Classic, by being second place, very close second place, to Kai Green 2016. Actually, yeah, 2016, 2017, he won the Arnold Classic. And this year, he was fourth place at the Arnold. He was beaten by Luke Sandow, but that condition that Luke brought was probably like one-time thing. We never saw it again. Hopefully, we're going to see it again at the Mr. Olympia, but we cannot really count on that. He's not a consistent bodybuilder. Uh, Cedric is not known for being conditioned, for being consistent either. But if he comes the way he usually comes, it will be enough to take fifth place. If he comes peeled to the bone, like he never was, he can even win the throne. Like he's very complete. He's tall. He has tight midsection. Developed back, arms, shoulders, chest, quads, hamstrings, glutes, everything is there. He just needs to come peeled. That never happened. And I don't think it will, it will happen this year either. So, fifth place for him is huge jump. Huge jump. I mean, that's a huge achievement. Top five at the Mr. Olympia. Wow, that's qualified for the next Mr. Olympia automatically. And then he has the whole year to improve on his physique. So, if that happens, that would be great for, for Cedric. But it's not guaranteed that he's going to be fifth place. Guys like Luke Sando can beat him. For sure. Luke is huge. Luke is complete. If he just brings his uh, 2019 Arnold Classic conditioning, he can beat Cedric. Also, you have guys like Nathan Diasha. Nathan can possibly beat Cedric. He beat him last year. But I don't think he will do it again. I think uh, Nathan kind of downsized a little bit this year. He says he gained a couple of pounds. But to me, he, he seemed... More conditioned, but much smaller. And I don't prefer him in this physique. Hardy chopped and beat him. He destroyed him, actually. Hardy is also a question mark. If Hardy comes, he can actually beat these guys and take, like, top four, top five, something like that. But that's a big question mark. And I'm not gonna make any prediction with question marks, because I have no idea until they make official announcement, until we know for sure that they're competing. I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about it. And uh, the next guy that I also wanted to mention that can possibly crack the top six is John De La Rosa. That's right. He won Puerto Rico Pro this year and he looked exceptionally good. I never saw him this condition. And the reason why I say he can actually crack the top six is because of this back. Look at his back. It's very complete. Very well developed and straight at Christmas tree, how you call it, or spinal erectors. His lower lats are developed and visible. When he's conditioned, you can see the striations there. You can see very dominant and uh, built up traps, rhomboids, lats, shoulders, everything from the back looks great. His hamstrings could do some work, you know, he could get them a little bit bigger. And his quads are not the perfect shape. And that's why he will not win the Mr. Olympia. But crack the top six, I think that's very safe to say. I think he will crack the top six. I think. That's a bold prediction. That's something that you're not sure about. I mean, based on his previous performance, you wouldn't really say that. He only won one show this year and he was looking great. So if he repeats that shape, if he comes like he was at the New York Pro, no, no, it's not going to happen. He'll be like top 10. But if he comes like this, he can win it. He can, I mean, he can crack a top six, not to win the Mr. Olympia. He can win that sixth spot, which is great. Maybe even fifth spot. And you also have guys like Steve Kuklo, who have very good chances. Steve won that Indie Pro and he looked amazing. But, you know, he doesn't have those deep cuts. He, his muscle uh, kind of looks dead. He's conditioned. You can see veins all over his body. His skin looks tight. But there is no depth to his muscle. Maybe it's just like muscle maturity thing. 
or just his genetics, but I'm not really blown away with his shape. And um, there is a lot of other guys who can surprise us, who can improve, like Patrick Moore, for example. He's a, he's a newcomer. He won California Pro this year and uh, qualified for the Mr. Olympia by winning it. He can surprise us, but I think he has the muscle maturity, the muscle completeness to really be the top six. So, in my opinion, with all the guys we know are competing, it's going to be this, this uh, bunch and in this order. We have Brandon Curry, Rolly Winkler, William Bonek, Dexter Jackson, Sajuk McMillan, and John De La Rosa. That's my take. So now, if Phil Heath shows up, he can win it. Yes, he can. I believe he can. Kai Green can win it also. Big Ramy, if he comes, he can be probably like top three. If he comes perfectly peeled, like he never was, he can win the show. Now, we also have Sean Roden, our current Mr. Olympia champion. After all that controversy, he was banned from competing in the Mr. Olympia, as you all know. But he did say that he is gonna compete in the Mr. Olympia, and that can mean that somebody knows something that we don't, that, for example, the case will be over before Mr. Olympia, that his problems will be resolved, or that the Mr. Olympia organizers are actually gonna let him compete. But we don't know that for sure. Until we do, we cannot speculate and we cannot predict him winning any places at the Mr. Olympia. But he posted this photo a few days ago, and it's just him bent over, showing his back. And he posted this one yesterday. But who the hell knows if this is recent or not? I think it is. I think it is because I don't think he will be posting a physique update, posing uh, pictures like five weeks before the Mr. Olympia, while everybody is wondering whether he's going to compete or not. So I think this is recent. And based on this photo, what can I tell? He looks good. He looks very good. And you know, Sean Roden is not winning shows based on his size. He's winning it on his completeness and conditioning. And when he is conditioned, he's a very dangerous bodybuilder. He's the Mr. Olympia. He beat Phil Heath, who is a very good bodybuilder. I mean, yeah, Phil Heath's stomach was a big problem, but still, Sean was great at the Mr. Olympia 2018. So if he shows up, and if he shows up in shape, and if politics are not a factor, he will be battling Brandon Curry for that first spot, in my opinion. And... Uh, he is either going to be first or second. And that's my take on Sean Roden. That's about it for this video, guys. I gave you a couple of new updates and a couple of my opinions on the Mr. Olympia 2019, who is going to win it, who will be what place. So whatever you think, if you think I was wrong with one of my predictions, tell me down below in the comment section. I will try to read all the comments. I mean, I will definitely read them all. I always read them all. The ones that I like, that are interesting for me, I will answer them. And guys, thank you very much for watching and for all the support. I love your comments. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this one, like it. And that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching once again. All the best. Bye-bye.